nerd dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 41 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. So in this episode, we're going to try to focus on writing kind of a bare minimum set of specs for our dice set class, which will be an, uh, a collection of, or a, an object that contains a collection of the Nerd Dice die class that we've been working on the last few episodes. You can see here I've got some kind of wish list things that we'll iterate on with the dice set. For right now, we're just going to try to get the 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 bare minimum needed to instantiate it, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll add stuff in as time goes on. So we'll get the in this episode the kind of the failing specs worked uh, written, and then in the next one we'll get those. Uh, kind of constructor initialize level specs passing and then we'll make iterations onto that where we'll we'll do the failing test and the in the feature more um, more iterat iteratively from there on so we're going to use looking at our code base right now the total dice method will be our basis for constructing the the dice set module so number of dice number of sides number of dice options and so that's kind of what we'll we'll do with that the number of die number of sides since we're dealing with an array of dice we could potentially have that allow that to accept a an array of um, integers rather than a single integer. I think we'll, at least in the first pass of this, try to make it as much like just the normal total dice as a bare minimum, and then we can decide whether to implement the ability to have a bunch of different dice with the same, with, with different sides in the same dice set. So that's what we'll, and let me make sure that we've got our option, I'm going to make sure that this comment is up to date. So I added in that second option in the, the method comment there for total dice. And now we'll look at this as a, a basis for implementing our dice set spec. So we'll start with the die spec as our model here. We will create a new file. Do the dangerous activity of control C, control V. In this case, we'll deal with 3d6 as our basic uh, situation here. And we'll have, because if we look at total dice method, that second parameter number of dice is in uh, an optional parameter where you have a default of one, we want to have a similar situation there where we allow for the default parameter to to be used here so let's go back to die spec and fix I think I've got the yeah I've got the language backwards on that so without options, and this is with options. So we'll fix that. Um, one die and 
no options. and no options. With one die and options. And I bet you can already anticipate that there's an opportunity to refactor here, but we'll we'll do that later. Now we'll get rid of the rest of this stuff. So we've got our basic version of this, and we'll start writing and adapting these specs. So I'll get back and uh, pause this and write them out. So I've got my it statements for our four situations written out. I did notice while I was doing this that we have a bug in our with inst instantiation options section here of the the die spec. So uh, this should be between one and twelve because that's the number of dice we've got there. Let's run through what we expect to have happen. So we've got four scenarios with one die and no options, with three dice and no options, with one die and op and instantiation options, and with three dice that doesn't and instantiation options. We'll go through what these behaviors should be. So number of sides will come from the first argument in all of these examples. The default number of dice, if you don't provide it, is going to be equal to one. So that'll show up in our third, first and third blocks there. Expected using generator of nil by default. Expected foreground color, which we're going to, just like the other situation, get from the default configuration. Same deal with background color, default damage type of nil, total between one and number of sides when you've got a single die. You can see that in the first and third situation. And then it'll have a dice property, so that'll be a, an array of die objects. It'll have a length of one and then that one element will be a die object. So those will be the things that will validate. And then in the situation with three dice, so things that change, the number of dice come from the second argument. The All of the options items will be the same, and you can see that those could lend themselves well to shared example situation. It's got a, a dice property with a length equal to number of sides. And that'll be number of dice. And that will be the second and fourth context blocks there. The total when you've got a number of dice being rolled will be between the number of dice and the dice time size. So thinking about 3d6, your number will be between 3 and 18. And in um, and then you want to validate that they're all die objects. So then you're back to 
one die so it has the same properties for our one die example above but this time it starts applying the using generator value the provided foreground background damage type um, and then all of these we also when we're passing in properties want to make sure that they get cascaded down to the the die object being created so the ap applying foreground color to the object to, to the die object all those other things that we're providing as options we want to also have expectations about them passing them down to the objects being created and then our fourth situation is kind of the combination of two and three so you've got your number of sides number of dice the all of these will use the same applies situation that we had before so I'll pause and fix those so I've applied all of those for right now we're not going to well, we'll start this before refactoring to a shared example so we'll we'll do the kind of redundant repeated yourself version of this we'll implement the method to get these passing and then we'll refactor the passing specs out into shared examples kind of the reverse of um, kind of the test driven where you have the red you get the do the minimum to make the spec pass and then you refactor you can go the other way you make sure that you've got your passing specs that you've implemented the code and then you would keep that code the same and change your specs to be refactored and expect that they all continue to pass let's start implementing some of these so I can when I co copied and pasted I commented some of these out from the uh, from the item so uh, these will all be dice set dice set number of dice be one So um, I chose using generator instead of generator override, and I'm going to make that change to our die spec right now as well. So I'm going to do, do that quickly, make sure that it still passes, because since it's a, an op option optional arguments there, I, as the creator of this, am going to get mixed up if we use different hash options in different contexts. So we're going to align this all with total dice and make it easier so that you don't do what I did in the previous video and uh, provide wrong hash arguments that don't exist to the, uh, the, for example, the reset seed method. So I'm going to go and switch over and make that change in die spec and die. So we're just going to do a straight up Control H. All of these places will now be exactly the same as the using generator here in total dice. Actually. Be randomization technique. So let's go to die chain change that to randomization technique everywhere. And then we'll do the same thing in die spec and make sure that our die specs still pass we d 
do. No. Just. We know that everything in this is going to fail, but. Make sure there aren't any other. We haven't saved the file yet, so that'll. That seems to have worked nicely. So now we're going to go back to dice set, which we haven't saved yet. And using generator, we're going to replace that everywhere with randomization technique. And then using space generator with randomization space technique. Do the same thing in die spec. I didn't do that before. So we, before we had all right, generator override did not exist in plain text without the snake case. So we're good there. Uh, we'll continue applying these. That will be the same, only with a different variable name. That will be good. That will be good. That'll be the same other than the variable name. So total to be between one and twenty. one here and then first element I think that's what we want from a set of specs here. We'll look at our our differences here. So for three dice and no options, actually that's our that's our subject version. So we need to After I get the stuff copied down, I'll pause and apply that and then I'll apply the differences. So I've got that, the ones that are the same at least copied down. Now we'll go in and get all of these to one die. All right, 
and then we've got all the ones that are the same. Dissect.total to be between 3 and 18. In this case, our Here we want to have you can have a I think we've done it before and then you can just do see if RuboCop lets us get away with that, considering that it's not one expectation, but the same expectation of in an iteration. Now we'll do the same thing with instantiation options. This, these are going to be the same for three and four, so we're just going to have up at the top of the class Sure that all right. That's in a lot of places here. Not in die, not in die spec, but it is here. Snake cased. And then I think we should be able to go 
double splat dice options in I think that should work where we, we take the arguments and then double splat the, the hash that we define there. All right. So this will be the same for the first two. will just carry over wrong value. This will be the same as our previous total, other than the fact that it's going to be 12 instead of 20 this time. need to also apply a bonus here. Let's make sure that that gets modified here so It'll be between six and seventeen. These will be the same as what we had above. Override. 
edit them and replace the variable. All right, and then these cases we're going to same expectations about all of these, including randomization tech. Oh, it's there. We'll just order them the same that we had before. Do that below as well. this in each of our items and then we'll make assertions about die instead of one die with options. damage type. Now we've got our three dice situation. So you get how this works. I'm going to just pause and apply the appropriate options from each of the previous things we've gone through, and then we'll take a look at it together. So a quick note, as I was doing this, uh, the I didn't replace the number of sides and number of dice in the, uh, the 3D6 situation, so just fix those. Another thing I noticed is applying this, so the um, all these ones with the, the dice property, it has to be object.dice.length. So if we lo go and look back at our other examples, .dice.length. And the same situation with one die dot, dot dice zero. Once we apply enumerable to this, we can make a modification to um, get rid of this part. So one die, L later on this will actually work where you can use a property indicator on this, but we're not there yet. So we got everything written out here. So pretty much the same. So number of dice equal to six, or number of sides equal to six, number of dice equal to three, randomization technique randomized from the options the color is the one we provided in options background color damage type the number of sides is equal to dice times sides plus bonus so 3d6 you're between 8 and 23 if you have a bonus of 5 the dice property 
uh, length. So noted here, um, options dot dice dot length, and then uh, each one is a nerd dice die, and then uh, making sure that those configuration options get propagated down to all to each of the dice. So going through each of them, making sure that the values provided in the earlier specs get applied to the dice that are elements of the dice array. So we'll go back. I don't think I've saved this file yet, so I think we're still in a situation where my specs should be, uh, no, we've got, we have saved this now, so everything is gonna not run unless we die spec which is the only one we modified and we can go get status here um, we modified the nerd dice spec the nerd dice die and then our our only changes to lib nerd dice were in uh, the comments there so no cause for concern there are well, let's see how RuboCop reacts to our changes we save we are saved only one issue there unexpected token so line 221 we've got a syntax error in dice set. So it do do and 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 got our context do and Context do end. All right, let me pause and troubleshoot this a bit. So we'll run this and troubleshoot it. Our specs back, expecting another end. So we'll put an end there. It's not going to be right, but it might pinpoint us to where our error is. Uh, ah, looks like that dice options is our culprit. So go back up. It has an end there. So we'll keep the that extra end, and then we'll let RuboCop yell at us. That might help us. So now we've got the uninitialized constant error, which is fine for now because we don't have a constant. All right. Block alignment. Inconsistent indentation. All right. So 
lot of these are correctable. Let's see if it was just an indentation issue and that was all it was. So. Oh, that was my problem. That line didn't have. Okay. There we go. So. That was my real problem. Look at our, our issue there. Down to four offenses now. Because our indentation wasn't really the problem, the lack of that end tag was our problem. See those changes that were made. 194. For using the all matcher instead of iterating. Over. die so 90 and 194 weird that it didn't care about the other ones all right so we'll see here so our expectation will be expect to all b a or dice die We will run Rubocop again. inside parentheses auto correct it all right so we'll right now commit what we've got Oops, all right, so write my message. So we've got our kind of temporary commit message. I'm not gonna push this to remote yet, but uh, that's what we've got. I'll rewrite and do this better when we squash it. But that one will stop there, and then in our next video, we'll pick up trying to implement this class. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.